Exercise 3F continues with the concept of simple harmonic motion, but it's different in that now we simply might be told that a particle is moving in simple harmonic motion. And unlike the previous exercise where you were told things about either the velocity or even the um, displacement, now you might simply just have to work with the definition because you're not given any equation for velocity or displacement or, or acceleration. So the, I think the feature will be that no equation is given for the motion of the particle. Rather, we're just working with its definition. So what we know is that a particle that moves um, according to simple harmonic motion will always have its acceleration expressed as minus n squared x. Now where that comes from is, as its definition he says, it's because its acceleration is proportional to um, the displacement from equilibrium and is directed back towards the equilibrium position. So we know that any time they talk about a particle that is um, subject to simple harmonic motion, it must satisfy acceleration is minus n squared x. We then work with that to get our equation for displacement, uh, for velocity. Now we know that this um, equation is in terms of displacement, so we know that we can't simply integrate with because we haven't got an expression in time. However, we do know that we can replace our acceleration with d dx of a half v squared and we saw that in the previous exercise. Now, before we go on, I need to define some other terms and um, variables. So clearly we've got that acceleration, we're going to use the symbol x dot dot. We know that x dot is velocity or v, you can use either one for velocity and you'll see either one used. x is displacement, a is the amplitude. Now you know that the amplitude, if we're simply talking about a pendulum swinging, then the amplitude is the furthest distance from equilibrium and we're going to assign a to that or if we're talking about a spring going up and down um, from equilibrium then we know the highest distance is a the features that we know are that when displacement is actually equal to a its velocity is zero and that becomes a really important feature about simple harmonic motion that we're going to need to use in the development from whoops sorry from this equation to anything else so for example back to velocity um, so you're going to see a introduced we know that n is the period and it is 2 pi, sorry, n is 2 pi on the period and t is 2 pi on n. Okay, let's have a look at starting with this expression for acceleration and moving back to velocity. So like I said, we could replace our acceleration with d dx of a half v squared is equal to acceleration. And what we're going to do is to integrate both sides of that expression with respect to x. Now, this is what we're going to get. This is where we're heading. This is what we'll have. But, uh, and I guess you can learn that off by heart, but more importantly, please realise that there could be questions that ask you to actually show that that's the case. So you must know this derivation or how we get this. And we're introducing A as amplitude, which I've already um, mentioned. 
So you can see that I'm taking the integral of both sides. So I've got my half v squared is minus n squared. Add, and with respect to x, add 1 to your x index, divide by your new index, and plus a constant. We're going to use this understanding about simple harmonic motion that when displacement is at its maximum, which we've called its amplitude, we're using a, then the velocity is zero. So substituting those values in, we'll get our zero is minus n squared a squared on two plus a constant. And you can see then that your constant is n squared a squared on two. We can then substitute for our constant and multiply every term by 2. I've done the two things in one go. Multiply everything by 2 to remove the half there, the 2 there and the 2 there. And we get this v squared is minus n squared x squared plus our constant. We could write that just switching those two, the order, put the positive one first and the min negative and then taking out the common factor n squared out of a squared minus x squared. So there is your derivation of an expression for velocity, starting with our understanding of the definition of acceleration for a particle subjected to simple harmonic motion. And so you then just use this formula that you've derived about velocity in terms of um, displacement to answer questions, knowing that n is actually equal to a concept that we don't probably spend too much time talking about. It's actually called the angular velocity. However, it is important to be able to make the connection between the number that you might have in that position and 2 pi on t because it will define for you the period. Now this next concept, a uh, little bit of good news. If we, we won't be asked to go from velocity back to displacement because the process for obtaining this um, is difficult and not required in this course. So if we are required to start somewhere with an expression about the displacement with simple harmonic motion, and we've seen these before, we would say that displacement is a, the amplitude times either sine of some impact on the time plus alpha, the phase shift, or a cos one. Um, and, and we saw those in the previous um, exercise. But in terms of needing to go any further with this equation, it's not required. We know that if equilibrium is not at x is um, say the origin or x naught then we will have again a slight variation to our acceleration um, equation and it will look like minus n squared x minus x naught where um, we know the value of where the equilibrium has been shifted to and we could go through the process. It looks pretty yucky, but it will come out as v squared is n squared a squared minus, again, noting the impact on the x as x minus x naught, all squared. You probably figure that, that should, this equation for v squared should look like that because we're impacting on the x and um, we've seen phase shifts and how you get that by yeah, showing um, a variation to x. I think I'll stop the video there and write up the solutions to these examples in another video.